Oh, son, what's good, my boy? Today, we're talking about using technology, this little smartphone, as a tool and not letting it consume you. I love traditionalism. I live on 50 acres of woods. Sometimes I forget my phone in the house and I go off on the trails for hours. I love to sit by the donkeys. I love to just be outside in nature. Love that shit. I don't check my phone for the whole eight hours I'm building structures as a contractor for work. Shit just happens to be like that. And I purposely choose to not allow myself to just indulge fully into all the pleasures that are on that phone. You could sit there and read Ted Kaczynski's manual and be like, bro, this shit facts. I agree with all this. It's just true. And yeah, it might be true. But we got to get to the facts here, dog, of what our reality actually is. This is it. This is what our fucking world is. Our world is going towards more technology. Our, mo our world is going towards online shit. That's just the way it is. No, most of us are not going to go be a Shaolin monk. Most of us are not going to give up all of our world, all of our technology and go move to a cabin in Alaska. Even though it sounds nice, most of us aren't going to do that. And I promise to you, if you were going to do that, you wouldn't be watching this fucking video on your phone or your computer or whatever. You just wouldn't. You'd have enough discipline not to. Because at the end of the day, if your belief is that technology is bad and all this shit, then anything you consume online is just poison with that mindset. Our reality isn't that case. We're more like cyborgs now than we were in the past. We can't go anywhere without this phone. Oh, I don't have my phone. I feel naked. That type of thing. We're more like fucking cyborgs. It's almost become a part of us. The way people go, oh, I can be a digital nomad and go to Thailand and I'll make my money. In the past, people would go and travel and build things or use their skills. Now people are like, oh, I got all my shit on my computer. I make my money off of that. Not everybody. I'm talking about like the digital nomad people. Them, them, that sort of thing. But it's like you see all these YouTubers and all that shit and all these like tech uh, at home remote workers and shit like that. I resented and I also disavowed and tried to stay away from it as much as I could. I didn't download TikTok until like two years after it came out. I just tried and tried and tried. And I kind of missed out when I think about it. If I would have started this shit back in the pandemic whenever most of the fucking people who blew up on social media did, then I probably would have had a better foot in the door. And now it has taken over three years for me to understand the tools that are at my disposal. The access of information that we have. I touched on this in my last video. We have a seven-year-old with an iPad and internet connection has better access to information than the most powerful, richest person did in the 1990s. 20 years ago. A seven-year-old. We have more access to inspiration, mindsets, knowledge, networking. All of these different things are all in this one little device that fits in your pocket. It's more valuable than a fucking wallet. Some people use this as their wallet and they don't even carry a wallet anymore. With all this opened up to us knowing how beautiful it is, do not hold resentment like some of these traditionalist people do. I'm, I love traditionalism, but I just don't align with that line but i believe that we need to work in unison with the way the world is going or you're going to get run over don't treat it like some of these self-improvement hamza youtubers where they're like we're at a war with silicon valley they're trying to maneuver and brainwash us with all this capitalism ah don't buy into that shit this is the way the world works if the people who complain about the nerds in Silicon Valley are just like the people who want to be like communists and socialists. Yeah, in a perfect utopian society, socialism, all these concepts, uh, no phones, we all just, how you doing, nod, use markets and all this shit, go to the fucking bazaar and get some grapes and shit. That'd be a perfect utopia. But that's not what we live in. We live in the real world and we must use what's at our disposal. Because in reality, there's no fucking time machine. What we have is now. Now, there's numerous ways you can utilize this as a tool. By starting businesses online, advert business and entrepreneurship has never been an easier, has never had an easier entry than it does now. You can fucking have, get your LLC online, 
start your idea, put your virtual, whatever virtual address, say you want to go off of taxes and get the lowest tax rates, set it in New Hampshire or Delaware, and there you fucking go. You're golden. You can start that shit in a single... You can start that in a single day and start doing whatever you do online. Me, I'm a lot more, like I said, traditional. I will utilize this as a tool and in my free time make a video or something like that, some sort of content, make more than I actually consume so I can go towards something. But in reality, I'm a fucking contractor. I make plenty of money in my trade. Once I branch off to, for my mentor, I'll be making fucking easily $25,000 a month, which is was my goal of it originally whenever I wanted to do all this online shit, but I love having real world skills. I've said in numerous videos before, I like people like Da Vinci. I like understanding all these different fields with an endless amount of curiosity. Uh, these videos, I want to understand all these videos. I went back and I'm teaching myself physics. I was the kid in the back of math where the fucking teacher, I failed algebra twice. I failed fucking geometry in school. I failed all these math. I was a kid in the back saying reading is gay, math is gay. And now half the time I spend is fucking through reading, teaching myself math and physics and understanding of the world. Just because it's become more interesting than me than just this mindless bullshit of chasing women and all these pleasures and passions that I had in the past. Which... Who's to say? They might come back. I don't fucking know. But right now in this present moment, I have an endless curiosity for a lot of these things. And the main, main one is this online. The diversity, the networking, all of these things which are just simplified down into one fucking avenue is so fascinating to me. We're at like this point in history that has never been documented. There's been wars. There's been innovations in war technologies. All of these different things. We've had so many innovations, but I really believe this might be one of the biggest innovations in, in history. I've talked it up like it's this big, great fucking thing. But there's a downside to it. It is very, very addictive to get in the mindset of a consumer when your product of consumption is right in your pocket. At any time, you could be feeling down, depressed, need some noise, whatever. And you no longer have to fucking smoke some weed. You no longer have to smoke a cigarette. You don't even, you don't have to pull a lighter and a box of cigarettes out of your pocket. You pull your fucking phone out of your pocket and sc scroll TikTok. I've seen numerous people on the jobs I've worked sc get addicted to scrolling TikTok. 50 year old men, 40, 50, 40 and 50 year old men addicted to scrolling TikTok. Because it's just, our brain is easily brought down of our understanding of the brain is simplified through the dopamine receptors and all of these chemicals. It's a real good easy way to understand how understand how this brain works. And TikTok and all this fucking just shit right in your face and just boom 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 over and over is the best way to get those things firing. But you fire them too much, just like chasing any other hedonistic behaviors. It will not give you a fulfilling because although some of these dopamines are getting fulfilled and you're like, think you're doing something good, there's a, one part of your brain that's more aware than that lizard tribal part that just goes off of impulse. And that's your rational thinking. And you start thinking, well, damn, I'm not doing anything. I'm just consuming. I, I'm not taking advantage of this asset. Oh, there's no meaning to lie. All these. You have to start having this fucking existential crisis because you're not doing much. You're wasting this potential. So the main thing for me that has helped me, I've been addicted to pornography. I've been addicted to the instant clicks, the scroll and just tits in your face. More tits than King fucking Solomon. I've been addicted to all this shit. The easiest thing that's helped me is produce more than you consume. And trust me, it feels dystopian as fuck to produce online. Sitting there with a the camera in my face. What's up, guys? What's up, boy? That shit is dystopian as fuck. You think I don't feel weird whenever I'm walking through my woods, my nature, my peaceful spot with the fucking camera? Like, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. But eventually, you find a little bit of a flow state with it. You don't think about the externals of it. And you can just go straight into the microphone and spit your ideas out. And it becomes more like an outlet than something that's awkward. That just comes with time. That becomes comes with being more comfortable with it, so and so forth. So produce more than you consume. This is, Produce more than you consume is one of the best philosophies in any area of life. 
all young people, the best Elon Musk advice to young people, he said time and time again, is be useful. Be productive more than you consume. That's a very good philosophy, especially with the online shit where it's super easy to consume, super easy to not be useful. So, what do I do? I try to be useful by providing a little bit of insight, a little bit of philosophy, a little bit of motivation, if you will, a little bit of tips and things like that that can help you in the real world, and then also a little bit of entertainment so I don't feel like this is just like some boring Mr. Rogers bullshit. Another thing to not get a to not get overwhelmed whenever you get to not get sucked in and overwhelmed is don't let the internet play so much on your emotions. Don't let comments and differing opinions, which there's an abundance of, thousands of different opinions in one comment section, you could spend all day replying to each one of them. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a single fuck. That's why they so so try not to confuse yourself with the abundance of opinions, information, it, because you can become very depressed and you can almost use it as a crutch responding to all these instead of just actually getting after your shit. And the main thing, after, the main takeaway from all of those two, and the last and most important thing, is have a balance with this shit. Elon Musk is not materialistic. He lives in a 50... Have a balance with a lot of this shit. Elon Musk lives has a $50,000 tiny home next to the headquarters in, in Texas. It's not materialistic. Steve Jobs went on like a whole fucking trip in India th with meditation and all this Buddhism and shit. Because there's got to be another half to all this. You can't be always in the online. You need to be in the real world. You can't always be chasing this money shit. You got to have a break from it. You can't always... There has to be a give and a take with certain aspects. You have to be here and you have to be here in unison. I, for a while, I was reading all these money books like The Millionaire Fast Lane and shit, which I believe isn't a bad book. It's pretty good. But there's a lot of these like hustle culture, cultures where they preach against balance. And in certain aspects, I believe in obsession. I believe in obsession. For me, I get fulfillment through my work as a general contractor, and sometimes I get obsessed with wanting to finish the job, and I'll stay four or five hours later than I should, when sometimes you need to just decompress yourself from it and chill, especially goes for the internet. I ramble with a little bit of these tangents, but it very much applies to what I'm talking about. So, with this knowledge, just like everything, this advice is universal that I'm giving at the end of these videos because it's kind of uh, it's kind of generic. But go with the flow of everything. Don't get so sucked up with these constant reminders online of other people's achievements and accomplishments and the way they look and all this shit. Compare yourself to push yourself, but don't compare yourself to hinder yourself. So, if you understood this, if it was a little schizoid ramble, I don't really care. Have a great day. Chase paper. Enjoy nature. New video coming out tomorrow is going to be a little bit more of an artsy, fartsy, faggy video. I'm going to try to do one of those a week just so I can get that out of my system. Because I have this conflict in my head where it's like, I talked about that curiosity on things. I want to do all this oil painting. I want to do all this general contracting things. I want to do all this shit with these videos. I want, I want to do all these different facets. I want to learn all this different shit. And the biggest uh existential thing that i've been dealing with was my creative outlet i've been so militant disciplined with these videos where i haven't put that much of like my my desire for film and all this shit on the table and i always feel like i'm selling myself short of what i can do on these videos it's just stupid in my head type shit so tomorrow that's gonna be that video then back on sunday i gotta make three more videos because i gotta go back to oklahoma for a couple of days so Monday and Tuesday will be a scheduled upload. Then we back on that real good shit, boy. Chase paper, enjoy nature, and have a great fucking day.